I'm Nina Dante. Welcome to this episode of The Snake Said to the River. The summer flowering plant foxglove grows wild in so many places and it's just going to seed at the moment. So today we're going to learn how to identify foxglove and how to collect its seeds for next year's garden. As a warning, all parts of foxglove are poisonous for humans, so this isn't an apothecary plant but it is a gloriously ornamental wildflower to invite into your garden. This is a stalk of foxglove that's gone to seed, and it's just so wild to know that this rangy stalk all studded with desiccated seed pods used to be a lushly flowering plant. Sumptuously clustered, Languorously swaying on towering stems, ornamented with large languid leaves, is the foxglove in full bloom. Tightly packed flower buds open into dense clusters of bell-shaped flowers. They're wildly ornate, speckled brown and white on the inner surface, a shady palace for pollinators who climb into the bell to gather the pollen that waits on bean-shaped anthers. Digitalis is the Latin name for foxglove, and in my area it's usually this jewely purple color, though I also see white foxglove growing here, and cultivated varieties come in a wider range of colors. While foxglove flowers are as smooth as silk, the most enticing glove that ever there was, foxglove stems and leaves are covered in an off-putting, cushy down. The leaves are large and floppy, like rabbit ears. The stalk is thick and sturdy enough to support the weight of the heavy flower clusters that crown it. They remind me of the stalks of sunflowers, actually. Foxglove can grow quite tall, and I sometimes find myself at eye level or even looking up to the highest bloom. When the flowers fall, a pyramidical green capsule fruit emerges in their place, which slowly desiccates and turns a light brown, crowned with the browning sepal of the original flower behind it. As it cracks open to spill its minuscule seeds on the earth, for me, it begins to resemble the head of a frilled lizard. When it reaches this stage, you know it's time to collect its seeds. Let's get to seed collecting. So collecting foxglove seeds is so easy, you're going to laugh. There are several different ways to go about it. One is to cut a stalk of foxglove that's gone to seed, like this one, and just shake it into a bag. It's going to make a super satisfying avalanche of seeds. I've even seen some people just shaking the stalk directly over the area where they want the foxglove to grow the next year, which is a super expeditious method. Another thing you can do is cut dried seed pods directly from the plant, like I've done here. I'm shaking the pods onto a bit of folded wax paper. I love the sound they make. And there they are, small like a poppy seed and a chocolatey brown color. On my seed envelope, I've marked the plant species name and the month and year I collected the seeds. And that is really all there is to it. So if you're interested in making your own seed envelope like I have here, next week I'm releasing a tutorial on how to make this exact envelope. It is such a useful object to be able to make at home and easily customizable for different applications. I thought I would take a minute to talk about the name foxglove, which objectively is glorious. You know when a plant has such ornate imagery in its name as foxglove that it's been twining through the human imagination for time untold. And foxglove has appeared in mythology and folklore since antiquity. 
In English, foxglove has been called foxglove since at least the early medieval era, about 1500 years ago or so. In Old English, it was called foxes glofa, which literally means foxglove, and it's changed very little since then, morphing to foxes glova in Middle English and arriving at our modern foxglove. There are many theories behind the origin of the name. Some believe that it has its roots in a folklore that foxes would slip their four paws into four foxgloves to hush the sound of their steps while they were on the hunt. The idea of a glove is backed up by the plant's Latin name, digitalis. This ancient word means of the fingers. So you can imagine a cluster of foxglove flowers as a sort of fingered glove, each bloom designated for a different finger. Going along with this idea of a fingered glove rather than a pod glove, some people believe that the word foxes actually referred to the fair folk or the fairy folk, and that fairies used to wear fox gloves as fingered gloves. In some communities, this plant was called witch's glove, which I imagine in communities that are hostile toward witches is a nod toward the toxicity and poisonous nature of fox glove. It's also been called dead man's bells. So the bell imagery comes from the shape of the foxglove flower, which is described as bell-shaped. And of course, dead man again refers to the potential fatality of foxglove. Going along with the bell imagery, some believe that the name actually comes from Anglo-Saxon and that the word was foxes gleo. So gleo referred to a sort of music that involved the ringing of bells. And in the folklore of the time, the ringing of bells offered mystical protection from various things. So the idea is that a fox would wear a wreath of foxglove around their neck as a sort of charm of protection from being hunted. And somehow it is not hard to imagine. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me for some plant adventures. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and find me on Instagram and TikTok for weekly short form videos. Till next time.